The Plymouth red-bellied turtle is an endangered large basking turtle that has distinctive red markings on its upper shell. The Pseudomus rubiventris banksi is found in the Plymouth and Dukes counties in Massachusetts and is the first freshwater turtle in the U.S. to be classified as endangered. Also known as the northern red-bellied cooter, the Plymouth red belly is found in freshwater ponds and rivers of various sizes and depths. These locations require abundant aquatic vegetation as well as suitable basking sites. These turtles were originally found in coastal plain ponds, but now are also found in man-made reservoirs, cranberry ponds, and larger lakes and rivers. They nest in exposed sand, gravel, lawns, gardens, and roadsides near fresh water. The broader red-bellied turtle species have resided throughout eastern North Carolina to central New Jersey. Most red-bellied turtles are historically from New York State, but most are now technically named the Plymouth red bellies that we are discussing today. As with many aquatic species, important abiotic factors of the biome the Plymouth red belly turtle lives in includes temperature and water. Temperature plays a big role in regulating this cold-blooded species, and water is necessary for any form of life. Temperatures have a great impact on these turtles' lives. The environment has to be 25 degrees Celsius in order for the eggs to incubate in the soil and eventually hatch. Temperature consistency has a greater effect on hatchling emergence than where the eggs are laid. Since this specific species of turtles are basking turtles, having an area for them to lay in the sun is vital in keeping them healthy. Turtles bask in order to strengthen and reduce algae growth on a shell. This equates to a healthier shell and turtle. The Plymouth red belly is affected by biotic features such as predators and vegetation, both for food and shelter. Predators such as the skunk and quality of vegetation can heavily influence population sizes. A Plymouth red belly turtle is born from a nest with 10 to 20 eggs after 80 days of incubation around late August to October. When young, the turtles feed on crayfish and invertebrates, eventually feeding on aquatic vegetation like milfoil. Around 5 to 7 years old, the turtles reach sexual dimorphism, meaning the two sexes are distinguishable by physical characteristics rather than just sexual organs. The females reach maturity at 8 to 15 years, males 4 to 6 years. Female Plymouth red bellies lay their eggs in June or July within 100 yards of their pond or river. They will utilize both vegetated and unvegetated areas regardless if the substrate is disturbed. A second clutch can be laid in the fall. These cooters have a long and productive lifespan with many nests created and eggs laid. They typically live as long as 55 years with only nature's effects on the turtles' lives. However, human interference has increasingly made this an impossibility. The Plymouth red belly turtle's long-term viability is firstly restricted by its small population size and restricted range. Small isolated populations lead to interbreeding, which then reduces genetic variability and population survivorship. The small population of 300 mature individuals have certain physiological requirements that make them vulnerable to housing construction which reduces available resting and breeding areas, as well as the removal of aquatic weeds, the turtles' main food source. Trees near the ponds and rivers the Plymouth Red Belly reside in historically had periodic fires which limited the amount of tree cover and allowed the turtles to bask. However, human interference has allowed these trees to flourish and block vital sunlight. Other vital factors contributing to the Plymouth Red Belly turtles' viability include water pollution and eutrophication, draining or filling of wetlands near ponds, shoreline modification, and the increase of natural predators like the skunk. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in the Northeast region places a large emphasis on the habitat protection and species survival as well as allowing gene flows from separate ponds to help increase genetic variability and thus adaptation and survival rates. The service has monitored the status of known populations of the turtle as well as searched for new populations. They hope to expand their studies to examine historical trends, mitigate limiting factors, and help reduce extreme pesticide and fertilizer usage. Protection of the known habitats can bolster the number of populations. This includes clearing nesting beaches, creating basking sites, and enforcing protection laws. The Wildlife Service aims to improve its Hatchling Head Start program and inject extra turtles where some habitats may lack numbers. Hope also lies in educating the public about the Plymouth Red Belly Turtle and its very existence, characteristics, and recovery plan. Allowing public schools and news media to provide learning material about the turtle can be a vital part in helping our favorite cooter no longer be endangered.